Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you're watching this from, however you're watching this, welcome to the studio this evening. Thank you for joining me. Tonight I'm going to be painting this wonderful, wonderful vulture. Uh, what drew my interest with this is that he's got this magical kind of blue head. Uh, the ones I see around my house normally have a red head on them. Uh, but no wonder, I, no matter, I, I really think that vultures are an interesting bird. They fill a niche in the food chain that nobody else does. They clean up after everybody else. And uh, I, I, I just think people don't really appreciate the vulture as much as it should be. And so I'm going to try to uh, do it some justice with this painting. Getting a few things out of the way, I've got a large sheet of paper here. This, I believe, is Arches uh, cold pressed paper, 140 pound. I'm going to be using a series of brushes to do my painting with. What I've got in my hand right now is a Da Vinci Squirrel Mop brush. Uh, I just use it to paint large areas, get, a, get water on to an area as quickly as possible trying to divide this painting up into a number of areas. His head being one, his back or, or top of him being another. You can kind of see I've painted around some of the feathers on his back. Uh, his, his chest and stomach area being another area. And then the uh, stump that he sits on. And I'm going to handle all these different uh, spaces slightly differently as I as I go through and paint these. The paints that I'm using this evening are my M. Graham paints. These sit on the table in my studio and for most of my paintings I go ahead and use those. I've just put a little bit of blue, it's cobalt blue, in his wing. If you look at that reference photo you can see that there's a little bit of a blue tint to some of his feathers there. The other colors on that wing are a bit of burnt umber and a bit of uh, sepia and maybe just a dash of azo orange. I like to throw some oranges in with my browns. I think it gives it a nice little bit of interest. And then I'm quickly going to paint the little stump that he's sitting on or, or log that he's sitting on here. Uh, a little bit of cobalt green in here, a little bit of Payne's gray, a little bit of burnt umber and maybe a little bit of yellow ochre in there to get the right colors. Uh, this is not the most important thing to paint though. I just want to get some color on here. We'll come back and uh, finish that up later, but it's got to be just nice weathered gray kind of ochre color. Okay, now he's got this collar that goes uh, around his, his neck here, and I want to paint this with some really loose jagged edges. The feathers there just kind of stick up in all directions. We're going to come back to this and really paint some feathers going any which way with those. But you see them going all over the place. I've got a size 4 silver black velvet brush in my hand at the moment that I'm painting with. <clears throat> okay, and now uh, I'm going to paint just above his wing and just below those feathers on his back. I want those feathers to stand out a lot, so I'm going to paint really dark underneath those. And then I'll paint the feathers light, and that'll make them stand out. It'll look like they're really tufted up. So I'm doing a little bit of sepia in here, a little bit of neutral tint just to get a little bit of color in there and then I'm blending that out as it's coming around his neck towards his chest they get a little bit of the feathers get a little bit lighter as they come in here and now down his chest area really some nice brown feathers this is a burnt umber that I'm using and I'm trying to think about how I want these feathers to look. Do I want the wing to be dark um, and, and the chest to be light, or do I want the, the chest to be dark and the wings to be light? I just need to think about how I want this to happen. When it dries right now, they're both going to be about the same color. 
And you see, I'm just dropping in some lines here. Those feathers kind of hang down off of there. <clears throat> I did put a little bit of blue in there. Again, a little bit of uh, cerulean blue just to help maybe match uh, the overall color profile of what we've got going on. Now the top of this little piece of wood is some, some more yellow ochre in there, just painting around his toes. Uh, I just want this, I could paint this any color I want. I just want to make sure it's slightly different than the outside of this um, so that we we know where the sides are and where the top is and, and how it looks. Okay, grabbing a little bit of that blue that I've got mixed up, but some sepia to make it dark and a little bit of uh, burnt umber. And I'm going right around those feathers. There we go, a little neutral tint in there too. I want it to be quite dark underneath those feathers on his back, so I'm just darkening that up a little bit. I don't want to go too dark in one, uh, one go round, so uh, I'm just darkening it a little bit at a time as I go. I'd rather paint in two or three layers rather than in one layer. I don't know if you can hear it in the background. My, I, I'm recording this uh, early in the morning and uh, one of my chickens has decided she wants to say something. So if you hear a chicken in the background, that's what it is. <laughs> I love my chickens. I, 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 I really, I should bring them on video. They, they'd be better than me anyways. Um, <laughs> I'm just, I'm sorry, I have to laugh, they're so funny. I never thought I'd like chickens uh, until I had chickens, and now, uh, now I can't seem to stay away from them. They're, they're really interesting to have their own personality and do their own thing, and if I didn't, uh, if I didn't know them by name, I, I, I would know them by, uh, personality and attitude. I never thought that chickens would have their own individual personalities, but they seem to do that, and they're quite funny animals. Okay, well, <laughs> I'm going to let them carry on, and I, I all I did was try to darken up underneath those feathers, and now I can get back to the head. The head is totally dry now. I'm going to add some more blue and I'm gonna put it on in kind of a modeled way, right? I wanna leave a lot of the white that's there. If you can see the reference photo, it's, there's a lot of white on his head or very light blue, and I don't wanna take away from that. I wanna highlight that and leave it there and kind of just paint in spots and speckles here and there to allow for that blue to hang up there paint around his eye. I'll come back and get his eye in a little bit. It's starting to look good, starting to look good, darkening his beak just a bit. Just speaking of different birds, uh, as my chickens are calming down now, I do typically like to paint shorebirds and animals that uh, birds that I find in and around the area that I live on the Pacific Coast. Uh, but if you would like to see me tackle a different type of bird, please leave a comment down below and let me know. I, I'll take it into consideration. I'm not going to promise that I'm going to do it, but I will certainly take it into consideration. And a better way to get me to do it, to so I see it, you could join my Discord server and talk to me about it there, convince me. Um, I try to be pretty active on Discord. Also, you can join my Discord server, and if you have any questions about watercolor painting in general, you can ask me there. I'm always willing to answer questions. I love watercolor painting, and I want other people to love watercolor painting, so if I can make it any easier for somebody to enjoy their watercolor painting, I'm more than happy to do that, so please join me over there if that interests you. Okay, so now I'm going to start to develop some feathers on the body of this bird. 
very lightly. Not a whole lot of color to start with. I want to put down in layers, 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 layers. And uh, so I'm just dropping those in and you can see the first bit of feathers. And I'm going to come back and darken underneath the feathers on the back once again. And again, I, I'm going to reiterate layers, layers, layers. Makes it easier to paint. It takes a little bit longer to paint, but it makes it easier to paint. If you do multiple layers, you can continue to put layers on. If you do one heavy layer and you go to put something on top of it, it's going to reactivate and it's going to uh, turn muddy and you won't enjoy it. So layers, 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 light layers upon light layers, and soon they'll get darker and darker. And now you can really start to see those feathers on the back stand out as these layers begin to build up. Now this will lighten a little bit and we might have to come back and do something again. Uh, but you can really start to see those. And the nice thing about putting in multiple layers is if I wanted that middle layer in there to be bluer, I could change the tint and put on a blue. If I wanted it to be, be red or be a bit warmer, I could change the tint uh, and make it red and make it look nice and warm underneath there. Um, just a lot of benefits of working in layers that you don't necessarily get if you put uh, all your color on in one layer. All right, looking at his head again, I'm going to try to get right around that eye. There's his eye. Once you get the eye on, it really starts to define his head and his face. Uh, you can put all the color on that you want, um, but until you get that eye on there, it really doesn't doesn't seem uh, like a real animal. So that eye is going to give a lot of character um, and bring it to life right away. I typically like to do my eyes a little bit later uh, because once you put that eye on there, like I said, it does give it a bit of personality and then I kind of feel like I'm painting to that personality um, if it's there already. But uh, sometimes putting it on a little earlier rather than a little later does, does help you define who that animal is and how you want to continue forward with your painting. Another, another light layer in here, we're defining more feathers. I don't want to paint into each individual feather. Painting each individual feather would take a long time. <clears throat> Might not be the best way to go about it. So I'm just trying to give the indication of some feathers here. Just the briefest little bit that, yeah, there are some feathers here. And if we want to go back at the end and put on some finer details and show some feathers, we can do that, but we don't need to do that. And then he's got these really long flight feathers back here. And I'm just going to put on a little bit of color and blend it out. I think I can do a couple of these at a time. And I don't know, he's got six or eight, maybe ten of these. I'm just going to try to go through and do a little here and a little bit there. And you can already see that as I put these on, but his wing really is coming to life. I haven't done much. All I've done is put on a line of paint and blended it out that little bit. And it really does bring that area to life. There we go. Put it on there. This is a little bit of ultramarine blue with a little bit of burnt umber. Uh, leaving it a little bit more on the warm side. It's going to make a gray, but you can... Add more burnt umber and it will make a nice warm gray or a gentle brown, which I'm using here. It's a very nice color. And if I need to darken it up a little bit, then I'll just put in a little bit of sepia and it'll kick it a little bit more towards the brown side, but it'll leave it nice and uh, a nice warm brownish color. And now that I've got a lot of these feathers defined, I can go back and I can add value to them. I can make them a little bit darker um, 
up uh, at the top underneath I can I can intensify the color across the whole feather I can there's a lot of things you can do with the feather once once you've defined where it is once you've given it that little bit of of an outline there kind of a bit of negative painting you might say and this guy's already looking great uh, but we're just gonna push it a little bit more and see what we can do with this all right I'm mixing up a little bit of black with a little bit of sepia all right there's some cracks and crevices here in this wood that he's sitting on there we go this maybe got a little bit of a blob there I've switched brushes at the moment this is a rigger this is a four zero rigger that I got from Zen art uh, this is part of their miniatures brushes uh, I very much like these miniature brushes that they have um, they the bristles on this are about an inch long they stick out quite nicely and they're quite springy and in addition to that they hold quite a bit of water really nice brushes I, I like these quite a lot which is why this one was gonna stay on my table for quite a long time some of the other I hate to say the Zen art supplies have been so nice to me over the over the years some of the other brushes I'm not quite so wild about they're nice but they don't come to a, a great point it's the only real drawback I have from them well that and some of the ferrules are a little loose uh, when you get them but uh, but they make nice brushes quality brushes uh, but these are I think fantastic okay uh, mixing up a little Payne's gray a little burnt umber a little bit of yellow ochre and I probably should have done this before I put those cracks on this post but I'm gonna do it right now and all I want to do is add a little color it's gonna give a little interest and darken right at the edges a bit will make this look a bit rounder uh, rather than a bit flatter and I think you can already see that uh, on the left hand side of it it does look a bit round when I get some color on this side the right hand side it's gonna make it look round also just blend, just blend that in a little bit I might even need to darken it up a little bit more yeah there we go see darken that up a little bit more and it does make it look a bit rounder it's not doesn't make it look perfectly round that's okay I, again I don't want uh, this little piece of wood to be the uh, the focus of this painting I just want it to be hanging out there something that's there with a little visual interest and now I need to think about how I want to paint the rest of the body of this do I want to do uh, the the rest of the feathers or do I want to make this whole thing darker what do I want to do with it I'm definitely darkening these few feathers uh, way in the back there and I've definitely got to darken up a few uh, where I'm working right now but it's time to start really thinking about it I would say this guy's maybe halfway done maybe a little bit more and it's time we, we should have the whole thing mapped out how we're gonna do it and from this point forward halfway through it should just be working on a few of the details here and there to really bring this painting to life and I think that's what we've got here now you'll notice I don't have all of these feathers perfect uh, I could have drawn them in or I could have painted them in all the same size here and there I think it just gives it a little bit more life a little bit more um, interest if they're all a little bit different right I don't want them all to be exactly the same even though even on the bird they're probably all pretty close to the same uh, here's an interesting area I need to add a little bit of color up here or I want to add a little bit of color up here but I don't want to make it so dark uh, that it takes away from 
uh, the underneath part, underneath the feathers on his back. So I'm just going to add some light feathers here to give this a little bit of interest. Again, this is just, this is a little bit of brown. Maybe there's a touch of blue that goes in there. There we go. Just, just darkening it a slight bit. And then all of these feathers down here, I've kind of decided they need to be a bit darker. I didn't make them quite dark enough on the first go around and they've dried too lightly. So I'm going to just going to redo those. And I'm going to try to do them kind of every other one so that I don't get my, uh, my washes all mixed together. So like I said, we'll just do every other one as we work down and, and go from there. I'm not sure what I'm doing. I may have gotten a phone call here. I'm back to it. All right. Whoop. There we go. Just like I said, just darkening these feathers a little bit and then blending it out where the feathers overlap. That dark area is underneath the feather above it. And then just let it come out a little bit on the bottom side. And these feathers are going to look like they're stacked all one on top of the other as we're doing this. There it is. I could have used a slightly smaller brush here, I guess. Uh, I think it's okay that it didn't. A little bit smaller brush would have given me just a little bit more control in here. But no matter. <clears throat> the painting's still going to turn out lovely. <clears throat> Excuse me. Looking back at the feathers on the back. Just adding some darkness to these. Just trying to make them stand out a little bit. <clears throat> so they look a little bit stunning when you when you see them initially. You look at this painting and you're going to see all these wonderful feather shapes just kind of hanging out. <clears throat> it's a little burnt umber underneath there. I do turn my paintings fairly often. If you've seen any of my videos before, you know that I do turn my paintings. I'm trying to make it as easy as possible to paint <clears throat> rather than as easy as possible for somebody to view. And I've always done that. That's kind of the way I learned was to turn the page if I ever needed to rather than try to paint uh, at a different angle. I don't make a lot of excuses for doing that. And I always suggest to uh, people that I'm teaching to paint that uh, feel free to do that. There's nothing at all wrong with that. If you can do something to make painting just slightly easier for you, you have the obligation to do it because if you're more comfortable painting it that way, then you're probably going to paint a better painting. And that is the goal really for all of us is to paint something that's extremely nice that everybody else is going to want to look at. A few details here and there on the feathers on the top, a little bit of shadowing on a few, a couple of rough feathers sticking off. This is the time to put on a couple of those details. And then here are all of those crazy feathers that stick out here and there on the neck of this guy. I'm just going to draw those in kind of in a random pattern. I'm not going to, I'm not going to pack them in too tightly uh, because I want you to be able to see those as you look at it, but I want to get enough of them on there so that you definitely notice they're there. And then all of these down here, have a little bit of extra color to added to them. In fact, I think I'm going to, yep, I'm going to make this darker. It'll make that wing stand out just a little bit more. This is a little bit of cobalt blue, 
a little bit of burnt umber, just a touch of sepia in here. You can see the burnt umber uh, making it a nice, a nice warm brown there. And, and as we go down his stomach, uh, more of the sepia down below. And that just pushed that wing straight towards us by doing that. All right, the next thing we need to do is, I think, work on his feet. No, no, what am I doing? Yep, his feet. Definitely need to work on his feet. I'm painting them blue-ish, kind of to match his head. I think it's a, it's, it's a wonderful thing to do. And uh, we're coming to the end of this painting now. I hope you enjoyed this. If you like it, give it a like. Leave a comment down below. I've got links down below to my social media, to my website, and to my Discord server. If you uh, would like to converse with me about painting or anything else, please join that server. I love to talk watercolor painting, and that's a, a place we can do it a little bit more in-depth than I can in the chat for a video. And with that, I think I'm done. Thank you for joining me in the studio this evening. I hope to see you again next time. Until then, have a great day.